Hello again, everyone. We are finishing up the chapter called Work Versus Work, and uh, I'm not sorry we're spending so much time on it because the recognition that nonviolence can operate under the visible surface of things is extremely important and will lead us up to a very uh, major conclusion in a little while. But I wanted to share with you two stories that are in this chapter. One is the story of uh, Le Chambon sur Ligny. It's a small village in the south of France. The pastor was André Trocmé. And uh, when the Vichy regime took power, he called his parishioners together and he said, what do you want to do about this? And, you, you know, they came from a Huguenot background, so they had experienced in their own remote past, they had experienced some persecution. And uh, his charisma, his influence was such that the entire community went along with him and said, we're not going to participate. They proceeded to shelter uh, Jews and others who fled from Nazi persecution all over Europe, particularly Eastern Europe. And uh, in the course of the war, probably saved about four or 5,000 people. So the question comes up, how did the, Discapo, the Gestapo fail to realize this with thousands of people coming through, uh, children going to school out in the woods and so forth? Well, the fact is that they did realize it, that the commandant uh, Schmeling was uh, perfectly aware of what was going on, but he felt there was nothing he could do about it. And as he explained later to the Trockmays, uh, that he had said to the Gestapo, uh, Colonel Metzger, who was in charge of the reason, region, this kind of resistance has nothing to do with violence, nothing to do with anything we can destroy with violence. Uh, uh, Schmeling said, I'm a good Catholic, you know, so I understand these things. Uh, the second story, uh, some 20 odd years later, uh, is now called Prague Spring. It was a uprising, a reform movement that took place in Czechoslovakia under the presidency of Alexander Dubček. And the reforms of communism in Czechoslovakia at that time were alarming to the Soviet high command, and uh, they eventually decided they were going to have to uh, overcome it with military force. Uh, Czechoslovakia, not a very big country, invaded from three directions by half a million troops in the Warsaw Pact, and the high command had proposed that it would take about four days to crush the movement, and by military logic that was exactly correct, but once again, the military logic didn't apply. The Czechs didn't respond militarily. They didn't try to prevent the troops from entering Czechoslovakia, which is in military terms called shallow interdiction. They practiced deep interdiction, which is thwarting them once they got into the country. This movement, this uprising, which was supposed to last four days, lasted eight months and it didn't really collapse from within. Uh, it was not overcome by external force, just as Pennsylvania was not. Instead, there was some trickery and some cunning, and the leadership was basically forced, tricked into accepting a phony compromise. It was quite a tragic result uh, in terms of work. It did, however, do a lot of work work, and that is that later on in the Velvet Revolution, when communism in the Soviet Union collapsed, Czechoslovakia made a very graceful and nonviolent exit from the Soviet bloc, uh, very much because of the, what I, they had learned at Prague Spring. But anyway, two other things about Prague Spring are important. One, that uh, it was marked by a great uh, degree of inventiveness and humor. And uh, many nonviolent movements have used humor to good effect. Uh, at one point, I think this is probably not in the book, there was a, a parade which was anyhow uh, illegal or under curfew, and the people, the Czechs who were parading, were pretending to be talking into radios, which was again illegal. So the police swooped down and confiscated these radios, which turned out to be blocks of coal 
and they said on them, Soviet radio doesn't work. Uh, but a, what, a really clever thing that they did was they changed road signs around and painted them over. So on one occasion, an entire Polish army swept into Czechoslovakia out of Poland, followed the road signs at the end of a long day's journey, found themselves back at the border where they had uh, come in. The other thing noteworthy about Prague Spring is that it became the icon for uh, what's called civil-based or civilian-based defense, which is how you defend your country against a foreign invasion. Uh, thanks to Gene Sharp and his workers at uh, Harvard, this is one of the two main moda, modes of behavior through which nonviolence can be mobilized against a military uh, situation, military danger. Uh, but to wrap it up, let's think now about R the Rosenstrasse prison demonstration, Le Chambon, and Prague Spring. And what we can derive from this unknown history is that nonviolence worked against the Nazis and against the Soviets. So the two huge threats, but with the excuse of which we mobilized enormous military destructive power, could, in theory, have been overcome uh, by nonviolent resistance if it had started early enough and was done correctly. So with that uh, challenging but inspiring thought, uh, leave you until next time and we'll start chapter five.